Hi kids, today we're reading chapter two of Meet Kristen by Janet Shaw. Chapter two, Lost. Kristen sat under an oak tree with Mama and Peter. She patted down the grass to make a bed for Sari. Although it was only June, the grass here in the park was already as dry as straw. Summer was so hot in America. Three months ago, when they left the farm in Sweden, Kristen had needed her wool, skirt, and shawl. Now her clothes were much too heavy. Even without her quilted petticoats, she was hot. Peter lay on his stomach, watching the road. He was on the lookout for Papa and Lars, who had gone to buy tickets for the rest of their journey. Papa promised that later he would take Peter and Kristen to buy bread and milk. Kristen couldn't wait. She wanted to explore this new town, New York. But Mama wouldn't let her go by herself. Swedish children could easily get lost here in America, Mama warned. While Papa was gone, Kristen watched the New Yorkers stroll by. The women and girls wore flower dresses with lots of ruffles. The men wore tight trousers and white jackets. Kristen looked down at her own tattered clothes. The only fine thing she wore was the amber heart her grandmother had given her on the day they said goodbye. Oh, Mama, I wish we wore such pretty dresses, Kristen said. Only the people from the ships look like this. Our clothes are dry and clean. We don't need to be ashamed, Mama answered. Her cheeks were pink again, and now she smiled. Besides, how could I milk a cow if I wore so many ruffles? Peter made a face. He hated to dress up, even for church. Then his frown turned into a grin and he jumped to his feet. Here comes Papa and Lars, he called. Lars held a handful of cherries. Papa scooped more fruit from the knapsack slung over his arm. He gave one big handful to Peter and another to Kristen. Then he knelt beside Mama to share what was left. I n I've never seen such huge black cherries, Mama said. Everything in America is big, Lars announced. Wait until you see New York. And there will be more to see tomorrow, Papa added in a hearty voice. I just bought our tickets for the trip west. We're leaving in the morning. Did you find an honest agent, Mama asked with a worried frown. Old Mr. Peterson was cheated out of his money by a dishonest agent. I didn't know there were so many thieves in America. Papa put his hand on her shoulder. Yes, our agent is a good man. He left Sweden four years ago, and he knows English well. And he helped me change our money at the bank. Mama still sighed. <sighs> it's such a long way to Minnesota, she said. But the agent will guide us all the way to the Mississippi River. He says he'll have to travel only a few weeks more, Papa replied. And now that we're on land, we'll get our strength back quickly, he smiled. Don't lose heart. Mama smiled. No, I won't lose heart now. Peter tugged the sleeve of Papa's shirt. Let's go buy our milk and bread, he said. Mama handed Kristen a milk pitcher. Stay close to your father, she warned Kristen and Peter. Remember, you don't speak English yet. Papa took Peter's hand as they walked along the wide, crowded street called Broadway. Kristen skipped beside them. She held the milk pitcher tightly in one arm and sorry in the other. Kristen had never seen so many horses, so many wagons, buggies, carts, and men and women filled the sidewalks. Children darted among them. In her small town in Sweden, Kristen had known everyone she met. Here, everyone was a stranger. These Americans chattered, called, and shouted all around her. Kristen couldn't understand a single word they said. She walked with Papa past carts full of onions and potatoes. Chickens and ducks fluttered and squawked in their coops as they waited to be sold. Papa, Kristen begged, slow down. I want to look around. Now there were candy stores, shops that sold tobacco, candles, tinware, cloth. Oh, everything. Here's the bread shop, Papa said. Round loaves of wheat bread were stacked inside the shop window. Papa carefully counted out two American coins, and the shopkeeper gave him several rolls. He handed one to Kristen and one to Peter. Now we'll get milk, he said. The fresh bread was soft and sweet. Kristen tried to eat slowly to make it last. She kept her eyes on Papa's broad shoulders as she walked down the busy street munching. She saw women holding huge baskets heaped with fruit. 
She couldn't understand what the woman said, but the red berries in their baskets reminded her of the delicious cloud berries her grandfather gathered in Sweden. Kristen paused a moment by the gray-headed berry seller. Then a boy carrying a tray of silvery fish bumped her. She almost stumbled over a small black boy who polished a man's boots. Wait, Papa! She called over the racket of horses' hooves on cobblestone. But Papa was gone. Kristen had lost sight of him in the crowd. Clutching sorry, Kristen ran. She squeezed between the women with their shopping baskets. Papa, wait for me, she called. But she didn't see Papa. Lots of little boys chased through the crowd, but not one of them was Peter. Maybe Papa and Peter are already at the milk shop, Kristen thought. Maybe they're waiting for me to come with the milk pitcher. She hurried along, looking in each shop window for cheese and barrels of milk. Where was the milk shop? Was it on the other side of the street? Kristen climbed around pigs that poked their snouts in the trash of the gutter. Then she dodged in front of a buggy, ran across the street, and headed down the row of shops. She couldn't find the milk shop anywhere. And this side of the street was even more crowded with shoppers. The babble of their voices made her head swim. Papa, Kristen called. Her cry was lost in the noisy streets. Kristen tucked her necklace into the collar and hugged the milk pitcher tightly. Mama had said there were thieves in New York, a lot of thieves. They would steal anything. Papa, Papa, Kristen shouted. Papa was nowhere to be found. Maybe I should go back to the park, Kristen said to herself. Mama's waiting there. But now Kristen realized she didn't know where the park was either. Which way had she come from with Papa? How many corners had they turned? She asked a woman with a baby in her arms, please, where is the park by the river? The woman kept walking as though she hadn't even heard Kristen. The park, Kristen asked a tall boy with black hair. He said something to his friend and they laughed at her. Help me, Kristen cried. Please help me. No one even glanced at her. Couldn't anyone in this big crowd understand that she was lost? Sun reflected off the cobblestone and the smell of garbage made Kristen dizzy. Her head spun as though she were seasick on the ship. But this time she wasn't seasick. She was frightened. What if she couldn't find Papa? What if she couldn't find the park and Mama? What would happen to her in this huge city if she couldn't find her family? Again, she began to run. She stumbled and bumped into barrels. When a dog nipped at her ankles, she didn't stop running. Now she was on a different part of the street where rough looking men in bloody aprons sold wild game and meat. Gutted rabbits, squirrels, and deers hung from poles. Sides of pork dangled from sharp hooks. The buzz of flies hummed in her ears. She headed back the other way, but she seemed to have turned onto a different street. The houses were all crowded together, and there were no shops at all. Papa would never look for her here, and every turn she took might lead her further away from the park where Mama waited. Kristen wanted to be brave. She wanted to have heart, like Mama. But she sank down on the steps of a brown house, hid her face in her doll's skirt, and wept. Tears ran between her fingers and, drowned, and dropped into her lap. Oh, sorry, she cried. What if we can't find Mama and Papa? Will they go to Minnesota without us? After what seemed like a long time, Kristen felt a touch on her shoulder. A brown-haired young woman in a long blue apron stood beside her. When the woman spoke, her voice was gentle. She seemed to want to know what was wrong. I'm lost, Kristen said. The woman didn't understand. She looked puzzled and shook her head, and more tears ran down Kristen's cheeks. The woman spoke again. Now she made a motion as if she were pouring. Did she want the milk pitcher? Kristen clutched it to her chest, and the woman went back inside the house. Sorry, what will we do? Kristen sobbed. Then the woman was back. This time she held out a tin cup of water. Grateful, Kristen drank until there wasn't a drop left. Tack, she said. The woman smiled and sat down on the step. She understood. Thank you. But how could Kristen tell her about Papa and the milk shop and the park near the ship where Mama was waiting? How could they understand each other if their words didn't match? Hopelessly, 
Kristen traced the dust at her feet with her fingertips. Then she had an idea. If she couldn't talk, maybe a picture could talk for her. Carefully, Kristen outlined the shape of the eagle in the dust. Then she drew two big sails over the ship and pulled out the corners of the woman's apron and pointed to her drawing. The woman smiled when she saw the picture. Quickly, she locked her door, put the key in her apron pocket, and motioned for Kristen to follow her. At the end of the street, they turned into a smaller lane. After a few more turns, they were beside the river, where the ships were docked. Far ahead, Kristen could see the tall oak trees of Battery Park. And there was the eagle. Tied to the dock, Kristen ran. She saw the path leading into the park. And at the top of the path, she saw Mama and Papa. Mama, Papa, here I am, Kristen shouted. Mama turned and shaded her eyes to look. Papa began to run down the path, his boots scattering gravel. Kristen flung herself first into Papa's arms and then into Mama's. Kristen, you frightened us, Papa said. We couldn't find you anywhere. I thought you would leave New York without me, Kristen whispered against Mama's neck. Mama's shoulders smelled wonderfully of soap and dry grass. The sun made her hair look like gold. What? Mama said. We would never, never leave you. But how did you find your way back? Kristen realized that the kind woman was gone. She pointed to her, walking away along the path beside the river. I drew a picture of our ship, and that American lady helped me find it. Papa hugged Kristen again. You're a very smart girl, he told her. Be smart enough to stay right beside me next time. Promise? I promise, Kristen said, and meant it with all her heart.